All right, so this is my um, Google Chrome timer. It's a double timer, a dual timer, a gym timer. I don't know what you'd call it. So I bought this uh, item. Let me show you. So a while back, I got this thing. It's a gym timer. And so what it is, it's the dual timer. So here's the idea of what I'm actually making here. You have two different times that you can set. So you can set, you know, 3.30 or 1.30. When this top time is done, then it starts the next one. When you finish, like, both of these then it goes down around so here's what the the extension looks like so you can set as many minutes um, i have it set to, so you can only do 99 right now you could actually input more than 99 um i'll fix that in the github or something uh, this is like the concept video this whole product will probably be out um within the week because i still need to fix it up uh, you know css wise i really haven't done anything um, but it works so and I, and I need to fix up the code because it looks really ugly, but it works So let's just do a really easy timer just to make sure that like you can see that it works here So again, the idea is that let me let me do a different time on one So you'll have four seconds for this first timer and then once this four seconds is over Then I'll go to the next one and it'll keep on going until um, You finish as, as you can see I was actually just using it to test it out uh, recently look at these rounds so with these rounds right if you have one round then it's only going to do timer one finish go to timer two timer two finish then uh, decrement a round it will have be at zero rounds and then it stops completely now if i have two rounds then it'll change and it'll go to basically um you know do the same thing twice so let's do it for one round and let's see how it works and i'll show you that it works with two rounds right now again um what i would like is that whenever i actually update this it should update the screen um, but that really is immaterial. It works. So that, that's kind of the styling part that I'll look at this weekend, uh, which I'll have time to do because I'll be out. Anyway, so let's do one round, four seconds, three seconds. So as you can see, it actually starts at three. Um, that's because I decrement it first, so I'll have to fix that too. And if you can hear that, that's the sound of it ending. So it goes that. <laughs> and then you have a little, uh, little music playing whenever the complete rounds have been finished. So let's do two rounds. Um, reset it. I think you can just hit set and it'll work too. Um, but then, you know, okay, it goes to the next one. Uh, cool thing is, let's take it off this this thing. So it runs in the background. So as you can see, um, it's at two. So now it should be at like two on the first one. Oh, it's already done. Okay, so I was fast because I went too far. Uh, let me let me do that one more time with a longer timer just to show you. Um, minute for both and three so as you can see it's, it's going it's at 53 wait a couple seconds now it's at 50 okay and then you can reset it of course so how does this work well this is a chrome extension so let's look at this code real quick again this is going to be better in the github so the first thing you have to do whenever you're making a Chrome extension is you need a manifest.json. So if you go to Chrome, right, and then you go to your, it's like other tools kind of, and you go to extensions, you can look at your extensions and a lot of the information that this JSON file provides will be in the extension. So like um, the description, don't forget the description. If I were to change that right now, right, and do that, save it, and then uh, re-upload it, then don't forget the ASDF. All right, so that, that's basically what the manifest.json file does. It also helps um, with like these icons. So I, I created these icons. That's why they look so stupid. Um, this is the 16 by 16 one. This is the 32 by 32. And then there's obviously, you know, higher resolution ones. Um, then this is setting a background script. So persistent true. I'm pretty sure that just means that like it runs <laughs> like all the time. Not really sure. This works. Uh, if it's false, it doesn't work. Scripts, that's just what your background script is. So we'll look at all the scripts in a second. Options page, this is literally just an HTML page. Um, so again, we'll look at that in a second too. Browser actions, default pop-up. That's what is setting this pop-up script. So it's it's setting up this um, this pop-up to pop-up of HTML. Uh, and then permissions, I don't think I actually need most of these. Um, perhaps notifications I need, but I, I was playing around with this, so I wouldn't take this one too seriously yet. I'll, I'll fix it up in a second. In fact, I, as you can see, I still have a test file here. All right, so let's look at, um, first off, let's just look at the HTML for the options. I mean, it's really easy. It's literally just an HTML. So in the, the options page is right here. Um, it says basically extension options is what it is. Um, and then it, again, it's just an HTML page. So popup.html, again, it's just an HTML page. But the interesting thing you have to keep in mind is that you cannot put 
JavaScript in here if you're using a background script. So I messed that up a bunch. Um, it has to just be HTML. And then what you do is you say, okay, well, there's the pop-up script if you're going to use it. But of course, we're using it in this. So the pop-up script is everything that's changing here. So all the background data, all the background information, what's going on, uh, let me get up a paint thing. So in a Google Chrome extension, or at least in this one, there are basically two sides. So here is the pop-up and then here is the background. So I'll, I'll just put, this is red for background, I don't know. And so in the pop-up, that's, it only runs whenever the pop-up page is running. So whenever you pop it up and like you have your pop-up thing, then it just reloads the pop-up script and everything happens. Now the background script, everything is constantly going. It's always running. So what I did was for this timer logic, I made a timer class, right? Timer. And then basically in the pop-up script, what happens is that you set the timer. So, okay, we're going to start the timer. And when it starts, then this guy starts going and he's doing his thing, right? And so the pop-up script completely forgets, you know, anything that's happened. So it has no idea that it, it even started the timer. Once you reopen the pop-up script, so when I do something like this, right? So it's on and then, you know, I, I reload it, everything reloads, so it forgets everything. And then what it's doing is it's going to read this timer information, and then it's just going to be, you know, each time it's um, reloading, it's going to be taking that information um, and then displaying it on the page. So that was a really, you know, poor way of explaining it, but hopefully that made a little bit of sense. So this pop-up script is only being run whenever the pop-up actually runs. Uh, it's not like any sort of um, background script because that's what you had the background script for. So now that we looked at this HTML, um, some things to note is just like how I'm displaying this stuff. So I have, you know, a bunch of just uh, IDs here and what I'm doing in the um, JavaScript for at least for the pop-up, or actually for both I think. Well, no, I, I, I don't know. I, I just made this so some of the things are kind of weird. Um, I'm just getting that information, getting the element ID, and then for displaying it, I'm just setting the inner text to whatever the display is. And again, it'll probably look better next week. Right now, it's just I'm more concerned about functionality here. Basically, I created a couple classes here. So I have this class called Tools. Um, and so what that just does is some really simple stuff like converts minutes to seconds. This actually converts the time. So you're given a duration in seconds and I'm converting it to display um, in minutes and seconds. So you can look at that, you know, if you do 70 seconds in here, then you're going to basically divide um, by 60, get the 10, you're gonna parse it. So you're, you know, it, just, just look at the math. It's really not that difficult. Uh, the timer is a class that I've made here. It has duration. Um, basically, the coolest thing is that you can link the timer. So you have, you set a link. It's almost like a linked list, um, but it's with timers. You can set a start time. Um, I mean, it's kind of what you'd think it would be. You just plop in a duration here and it sets the duration. Um, some getters here. Start timer, you're gonna create a timing interval um, every second. So this is a millisecond, so a thousand of those guys gives you a second. Uh, interval check is basically what's going on whenever the interval is running. And so what I, a quick fix to, to actually make it so that it will display the time. So now let's reload that. Basically what I was doing before is that I was um, decrementing it before I'd even run it. So now if I do, you know, three and three and I set the timer, you should actually see three. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's a quick fix. Uh, another thing of note is that if you have zeros on everything and you try to set, it's not going to work. So you have to do a non-zero time. If you have zero on one, it's going to tell you to set a time for, um, one. If you have zero on two, it's going to say set a time for, for timer two. So whenever I'm actually going here, um, I keep on hitting my mic, sorry. It's flipping the timer. And so as you can see, we have timer, count, count, and then it's just playing the audio. Right now, I just I had it for debugging. I was playing um, the console log of the audio. And so each time it finishes, it increments count. And when it hits two, then the flip cycle is complete and it resets it basically is the idea here. So when it hits two, then you're just going to... Um, reset the count. All right, so decrement, I mean, I could have just made it so it's just minus minus, I might not have needed this function, but I like to, you know, make it more uh, readable, I guess. Play sound, you really don't need um, this function because I can just play it over here, so I'll probably fix that later. Clear, it just clears the timer, set done, uh, setters, go to next, is whenever this timer is done, it clears it, then it goes to the next timer and starts, and then it sets um, the link timer um, done to false, and that just makes it so that you can easily jump around between timers. Round counter, just count so many rounds you're at. So uh, current round count, it starts at or one and one, um, and then basically when it gets to zero for the current rounds, then it plays that nice little uh, 
you know, song there. Flip counter, very simple, just keeps track of the counts. And you could have done this within, you know, the timer class, but I have a problem where I make too many, like, class variables, and I try to, you know, denote them by using all caps, but that doesn't always work because then I just make too many and it just screws everything up, so I'll have to clean that up. Uh, and that's pretty much it. After that, we're just creating some variables here um, and then just able to reset them by just creating new ones and always clear the time, the counter first or, or rather the interval. So whenever you set an interval, you want to clear it before you just like reset the object because that'll screw things up. So anyway, this is, this is um, I think this is really cool. This would be actually really useful. Right now I've been using this um, extension, which is just a, you know, a very simple timer and it, it, it does, you know, what you'd want it to do. Um, but it's not a double timer, so it only times once and then it's done and goes on again. So I, I wanted to make a dual timer because, you know, you could easily, you know, do five minutes or, or rather like, I don't know, an hour of studying or whatever and then a minute of free time. And so once it's done with that hour, then I'll go to that minute and it'll play. And so that's kind of the idea of, of that. Anyway, hopefully you guys um, find this useful and uh, star the GitHub project because it will be better within the week because all I really have time for doing now is um, CSS styling. I will not be at my uh, my main setup. So, you know, programming will be will be smaller in amount, but I'll, I'll make it pretty, I guess.